Hello, welcome back to another story time. I'm so glad to see all of you and I hope you're having a great week so far. Today we are going to read The Sheep in Wolves Closing. Now this is by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. Now, this is a story about standing up for yourself. Are you ready? Utopia was not comfortable in her own wool. She always needed to hide in an outfit and spread a fortune on her clothes. But no one paid any attention. She attempted to dazzle the rams, but rambunctious, ramshackle, and rample stiltskin barely blinked. She even tried to shock the other ewes. But eucalyptus, utensil, and hey you hardly noticed. This lack of attention annoyed Utopia like a bad itch. Then one final day, she received an invitation to the Wooly One's costume ball. Yes, here was her chance. She'd have the finest costume in all of Pastureland and outshine them all every day. Fluffy one. Ha! In a frenzy of excitement, Utopia tried on 57 costumes. Her clothes changing muscles were aching, almost worn out, when she put on outfit number 58. That settled it. This was the one. Eureka! She loved the warmth of the fur, the shine of the fangs, and especially the way the long clawed paws swung attractively when she walked. Everyone would notice her now. On the eve of the Woolly One's costume ball, Utopia arrived with her heart a flutter. She waited for someone to invite her to dance, and waited, and waited. And while she waited, the ewes and the rams did sheep trots and waltzes and gathered in small groups to whisper and point. Shh, bad taste, remarked a eucalyptus and utensil. Shh, faulty judgment, added Huey. Hugh, hey you. Shh, one wonders what sort of family she came from, wondered rambunctious and ramshackle. Shh. Cotton-brained idea, pronounced Rample Siltskin. Then, all of a sudden, as the sheep waltzed and whispered, Utopia waited, and a stranger entered the ballroom. A handsome stranger, with a charming sheepish grin, and wool so lovely it looked fake. The sheep were so taken with the beauty of this creature None stopped to wonder why a sheep would go to a costume ball dressed as a sheep. The flock gawked. What a beautiful sheep that is, don't you agree? Utopia approached a stranger. The stranger approached Utopia. From under his sheep costume, the new creature, newcomer, could see the fur fangs and the long sharp claws it had to be in a low growly voice he exclaimed mother mother beneath her costume utopia blinked mother she knitted her eyebrows a sheep thing mother growled the creature i thought you were away on a lamb hunt lamb hunt utopia found this puzzling but she did need a partner, and so their dance began. Ah, mother, the stranger growled in one ear. I've missed your home cooking, he growled in the other ear. Especially the you stew with ram ramen. Then he growled in both ears. Let us grab a couple fat woolly ones, leave the silly ball, go home, and dine on sheep. Utopia sensed that something was wrong. Dine on sheep? What kind of a creep would dine on sheep?
For the first time, Utopia noticed her ex-partner's long, sharp claws and extremely hairy feet. And then it hit her. She had not been dancing with a shriek sheep dressed as a sheep at all. Oh no. She had been dancing with a real wolf. Big, bad, and mistaking her for his mother. This varmin post this varmin posed a danger not only to her, but to all those in the ballroom. What do you think's gonna happen next? Turn and talk with your partner about what you think it's going to happen next. All right, are you ready? Indeed he did, for just then he ripped off his costume and growled, Come on, mother, let's eat! With that, he snatched eucalyptus, utensil, and hey you, and stuffed them into a sack. The woolly ones gasped <gasps> in horror and ran for their lives. What to do? No time for woolly brain thoughts. Utopia paced in circles. Mother, mother, mother. He thinks I'm his mother. Then he, then she stood up as straight as she could in her foolish costume, lowered her voice to a growl, and, and announced, Sonny, dearest, I have a surprise for you. Surprise, growled the wolf. He loved surprises and would have squealed with delight. But wolves aren't good at squealing. Utopia needed to stall for time, as she hadn't the foggiest idea what the surprise might be. So she tried to think of motherly things to say. First, my son, before the surprise, you must take a bath, clean your claws, and brush your fangs. The wolf moaned, Ah, ma! After that, you must do your homework. All of it! The wolf whined. Mommy! Then, sunny boy, you must pick up your room. That did it. He threw himself onto the floor and into a full-blown, out-of-control tantrum. I won't! I won't! He kicked his feet. You can't make me! He pounded his furry fists. I don't have to. So there, so there, so there. So great was his tantrum that within less than a minute, he was completely exhausted and unable to move. It was then that Utopia knew what the surprise would be. She flipped off her furry costume, bent over the helpless wolf and announced, surprise, I'm a you. The wolf opened one eye. You're not a me. I'm a me. You're a you. That's what I said, Utopia smiled. I'm a you. Who's a who? The wolf was flustered, and Utopia repeated, I'm a you. This was too much for the wolf's small brain to process, muttering, I'm not a you. You're a you. I'm a me. I came in as a me, and I'll leave as a me. He dragged his weary self to the door, forgetting all about dinner. He paused and gave one last howl. And I'll never, ever, ever pick up my room. With a stump and a thump, he was gone. Eucalyptus, utensil, and hey you, scrambled out of the sack and hugged Utopia. Everyone in the ballroom sang out, What kind of creep would dine on a sheep? For the rest of the evening, Utopia had a ball. She danced with eucalyptus and rambunctious and utensil and ramshackle and hey you and rample stiltskin. And she felt entirely comfortable in her own wool. Thank you for reading this story with me today. I hope you have an excellent week. Bye.